Glad you asked. Because we do have another eBay break here. 2018-19 Revolution Basketball Chinese New Year 8-box break number 10. Yeah, buddy. There we go. How's everything with you, J. Air? I have eBay breaks tonight. And I'm pretty much done after this. Olenek was balling. Olenek was balling. So was Whiteside. But for some reason, we just fell apart in the fourth quarter. Eh, Aaron, you know, I'm not going to debate a former Finals MVP, three-time NBA champion future Hall of Famer, arguably the third greatest shooting guard of all time. I'm not going to question his decision making, Aaron. That, that's just something I am not going to do. Yeah, after eBay breaks are done, this is the last eBay break, Jay, here. After this, then it's just going to see, we're, we're going to see if we can get these dice rolls going in the store. Dude, uh, yeah, Migs, I was very impressed with DeAndre Ayton. You know, he, he's like a 19, I think he's like 20, 21 years old or something like that. He held his own against Whiteside. Whiteside is a strong dude. And he held his own, man. He was in there bang, banging with him, mixing it up. Got the better of him sometimes. I was more so impressed with Mikal Bridges. That kid did some work defensively. Kelly Oubre did his thing in the fourth quarter. You know, he's a big reason why we lost. He didn't do anything for three quarters, and then in the fourth quarter, he just woke up. Tyler Johnson had a big game for him. Uh, we traded him to the Suns, so that was his first game back in Miami. And he played pretty well. But yeah, I was, I was more so focused on the... Uh, more so focused on the rookies. Aiton looked really good. That kid is going to be a beast. A special, special player. Once he can develop, you know, a little bit more. And I, I think Mikal Bridges needs to get more time. Maybe even put him in, put him in the starting lineup. That kid's a beast. All right, let's see what we have here. First box. I do plan on going to more Heat games. Uh, I would like to go to his last regular season game in Miami. I don't think we're going to make the playoffs, but you never know. Especially in the East. You just never know. Dude, Aaron, you must have missed last night's game against the Heat then because he, him and Whiteside were banging down low. You know, Aiton, uh, I wouldn't call him soft after watching, you know, that game last night. He got the better of Whiteside some, you know, every now and again. I'm not saying Whiteside's super amazing. He's far from it, but he is a physical presence down there. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, Megs, yeah. I mean, again, at this point, I really don't care. I'm just disappointed because I would I would love to see Dwayne Wade play in the playoffs at least one last time. You know? I would have loved to see him have, you know, one last hurrah in the playoffs. Yeah, Aaron, don't sleep on eight, man. You know, the, the kid, he's only going to get better and better. He's going to hit the weight rooms this offseason. You know, gain 10, 20 pounds of straight muscle. If he can work on that little 10 to 15 foot shot, you know, jumper. And get some more low post moves. Kid's going to be nice.
Well, I mean, now you're comparing him to arguably two of the top three centers in the NBA there. That's that's, uh, that's going to be tough, man. What's up, Brandon? Give him a couple years, Aaron. Give him a couple years. I know as a Suns fan, that must be tough, but he's going to be good. He is going to be good. How about the Lakers, though? How the hell are they not in playoff contention right now? I know LeBron was hurt for like 18 games or whatever, but still. I'm sure LeBron is uh, hating his decision right now. Like, man, I should have never left Miami. I should have never left Cleveland. I think it's safe to say LeBron could never go back to Cleveland. Right? Like, he's got, he's, like, he, like, that's it. Like, he can't go back. Heck, I don't even want him in Miami. You know, he, he did Miami a little bit dirty, too. Now, Jared Allen is a different species, though, Aaron. You know, Jared Allen is more of a defensive player. Where, you know, Jared, Jared Allen doesn't have DeAndre Ayton's offensive capabilities. And vice versa. You yeah, gotta give him time. I give him time. Yeah, Greg, that's one thing about LeBron. And he, honestly, LeBron's been doing that for a long time. Like, it's not like this is a recent thing. He was doing that ever since he got back to Cleveland. Hell, his last two seasons with the Heat, he was like taking plays off on defense. So that's that's something that I'm not surprised about. Very disappointing though. Exactly, he did it in Miami. He, and he's been doing it since. Except he could afford to do it in Miami. Because he still had, you know, a somewhat past his prime Dwayne Wade. He had Chris Bosh, who was in his prime. And we were, we surrounded them with defensive players. You know, Shane Battier. We had him. You know, Mike Miller, who was a solid defender, but, you know, shooting the three. Eventually, we got right. You know, the one thing about the Heat was we always surrounded him with the players he needed to be successful. You know, when he went back to Cleveland, they learned from what he did with us, surrounded him with shooters. For some reason, Magic Johnson decided, hey, we have a good enough off offensive team here. All we got to do is play defense, and we should be able to make the playoffs. Come on, Magic. Come on. Come on. Dude, Mike Miller was banging threes with 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 it with one shoe on. You know, I'm obviously biased as a Heat fan, but like, like, objectively, I really think he he could have won way more championships if he stayed in Miami. He would have attracted more free agents. And he would have been in a franchise that is known to win championships, and is, or at least in the modern era. You know, I like I like to compare us to the to the Spurs. You know, the Heat are like the East Coast Spurs. You know, we're a scrappy, defensive-minded team. 
But whatever. Man, this is box four. Dude, they got Bagley coming off the bench, don't they? The Kings still got Bagley coming off the bench. And the Kings are just a way better team than the Suns, so it's going to seem that way. Dude, Kings are playing very good. Oh, did he? Nice. Dude, Kings were my pick. They were my dark horse pick. At the, you know, I made a couple predictions at the start of the season. My top prediction was the Lakers not making the playoffs. So far, that's looking true. My other statement was, watch out for the Kings. And here they are. Trying to get, you know, I think they're, are they in the playoffs? No, they're not, they're not in the playoffs right now. But they're a lot closer than the Lakers, that's for sure. Lakers should have drafted De'Aaron Fox instead of Lonzo Ball. Imagine if De'Aaron Fox was on that squad with the Lakers. What? That be that would be Showtime Lakers right there. De'Aaron Fox is super underrated. That kid is a beast and a blur. Willie Collie Stein's been playing well for the Kings. They got a lot of young talent out there. It would not surprise me if the Kings make the playoffs and they and they shock the world and advance to the semifinal. It's all about matchups at the end of the day. Oh wait, I forgot to go ahead and go through this. I mentioned earlier James Harden's streak is over. Wendell Carter Jr. for the Bulls to 88. Trey Young's been having a really good season quietly. That kid's assist numbers are crazy as a rookie. And he plays for the Hawks of all teams. Who, you know, no disrespect to any Hawks fans, but they're not exactly a great offensive team. You keep, throw, you keep throwing that at my face, but I'm telling you, don't sleep on Aiton, man. What's up, Nathan? The Kings are a far better team than the Suns, so it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it, it makes sense that Bagley's going to have a better game being around better players who's going to put him in better position to make, you know, better decisions and so on and so forth. Whereas Aiton, Aiton's really out there by himself. Devin Booker's not a playmaker. Uh, playmaker. Nobody on that team is really a playmaker. So he's out there getting buckets on its own. So I hear where you're coming from, Aaron. But I'm telling you, don't sleep on the kid. Aiton is going to be nice. Eight in is gonna be nice. Chris Fitz, what up? All right, what do we have here? This is box five. 
Is there any basketball going on tonight? I want the playoffs to start already. A bold prediction. The Warriors will not win the championship this year. Hey, Spider Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell, the Jazz, the 88. I wish the Heat had drafted this kid. We had a chance to. But no, I don't think anybody saw Donovan Mitchell coming, honestly. Except maybe the Sun or the Jazz who drafted him. Kyrie Irving probably going to leave the Celtics next season. Like, unless they win a championship this season, and uh, that's not going to happen. I think Kyrie's leaving. I wouldn't mind seeing Kyrie in a Heat uniform. I really would not. I'm not a big Kyrie Irving fan, though, so I'm kind of kind of torn on that one. But I have a feeling that Pat Riley's going to make something happen this offseason. Yeah, Chris Fitz, but you know what's coming out, right? Heritage Baseball. A.K.A. a metric ton of base cards. That's true, Fitz. That's true. That is true. You got me there. How the heck have you been, sir? Have you participated in any of those uh, dice roll breaks that uh, that we've been playing around with here the last uh, few days or so? Mainly Jason. Jimmy Butler still for the Timberwolves? Okay, to 88. Next week is going to be the big day, the big week with, um, what is it? Encased football and select basketball coming out the same day. That should be hot fire. Wait, you're, you you bought it or are you buying it? Yeah, Optic Contenders Optic Football comes out this Friday. And Jason is live this Friday. And he, he, he already took care of me yesterday, you know, while I was at the Heat game. He still owes me a day, though, so... I'm kind of half-debating asking him... If he could go live for me Thursday. Ah, gotcha, Fitz. There you go. See, nice. Very nice. It's not the same as pulling it in a break, but, you know...
I wonder if we're going to see an autograph here. Sammy D. Dude, Jamal Adams is a beast. Alright, this is box seven. Let me take a sip of this water. Alright. See what we got. Chicka chicka wow wow. There we go. Nice. A look at Donkic to eighty-eight. Very nice. Really, Chris Fitz, get out of here with that. Remember that one guy on Breakers though? You know who I'm talking about, Fitz. That one guy. Not too long ago. You know who I'm talking about. Last box mojo. And the biggest card that came out was that Luka Doncic to 88. Fitz, I don't think he would take that personally. I did not, Fitz, but I did hear about this uh, rookie Brady card that sold for like almost half a million dollars. Did you hear about that? I think it sold for like 400k. That's, that's who I need to be working for, Fitz. Holla at your boy when they hire him. Alright, last box mojo. You already know, yo. Here we go. Yeah, that's it's yeah, dude. Officialness, officialness. You know, one day we'll be at that level. For now, enjoy this Chinese New Year's revolution break. <laughs> uh, how the hell do we lose to the Suns, man? Is those freaking jerseys? I swear, we suck in those jerseys. They look nice, but ever since we brought those jerseys out, we have sucked in them. And that, my friends, is going to be it for the break. All right. So, the highlights are, well, I got this Luca base card, and then I also have this Luca uh, New Year variation, and then I have this Luca New Year variation, number 88. Very nice. I also have Jimmy Butler, the Timberwolves, to 88, Donovan Mitchell, the Jazz, to 88, and Wendell Carter Jr. of the Bulls, to 88. And that's going to do it for the break. Thank you, everyone.